All right, back to the idea of creativity. I'll throw excellence in there as well. Much is made, conferences, um, worship arts, there are you know, pastors of, or arts pastors and things like this, and uh, often associated with the, the singing and so forth. Some churches make the decision to hire musicians, etc., holding that value so highly. Uh, even perhaps they're not even necessarily Christian artists and so forth. So, um, and, and, you know, many musicians, they, they view themselves, or, and, and rightly so, perhaps, as artists and so forth. So, what role should creativity and or excellence play? Uh, should it be a goal? Uh, should it be a priority? Uh, proportionally, what kind of role should creativity play? Yeah, I'll let you go first. Well, I, I like the word you use, proportional. Um, creativity should play a proportional role. The, the priority must be congregational singing. Okay? That must be the priority. The priority must be congregational singing. The priority must be congregational participation. The priority must be congregations singing gospel-centered sound doctrine and being transformed by what they sing. So congregational singing must be the priority. Creativity, if employed, must serve that purpose and must not distract from that purpose. And if it doesn't enhance that purpose, uh, you know, cre creativity, creativity shouldn't be assumed. It, it is not primarily what we are about. We, we are not primarily about creativity. Um, we're about content. We're about content and we're about congregational singing, not primarily creativity. So creativity must be handled very carefully or else creativity can easily distract from content and congregational singing. I'm not sure who originated the phrase, but what we win people with, we win people to. We are not trying to win people with creativity. We're not trying to win people to creativity. We're trying to win people with the content of the gospel. We're trying to win people to congregations passionately singing and freshly affected by the gospel. So it doesn't mean creativity doesn't have a place or role because I'm not arguing for predictability, but creativity must be handled carefully because it has been assigned, from my limited observation, exaggerated significance in the average modern American evangelical church. And I think this should uh, bring great peace to the soul of a worship leader, y your role during the week is, is not, <laughs> I mean, this should release all from the pressure to be more creative than you were last week. Now, now your role is to find your way uh, again and again and again to the content of the gospel. Um, your role is to promote and provoke congregational singing. Um, that's your primary role and purpose not the introduction of creativity that exceeds last week's creativity. So, let's just be a few musings on creativity. And, I, 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 again, I, I'm, I mean, we, we've talked about, we don't, we don't want to become predictable in certain ways, so we're trying to be sensitive or discerning of, of patterns of predictability. Uh, so, the, the wonderful creativity tonight, that choir, my opinion, estimation was creative, but the, the choir served a role. When they were singing, we were affected by what they were singing. And then we didn't just listen to them indefinitely, we then entered in with them to sing along with them. And so ultimately what it was about was congregational singing uh, to the Savior. So that was a way creativity enhanced, provoked, and didn't distract. Uh, yeah, another helpful a phrase that's been helpful Again, I don't know where it came from, is uh, creativity is not something you do. It's a way you do something. We, we can focus on, well, we've got to be creative. You know, whatever role we play, uh, video, media, you know, uh, on the base. Whatever. It's just, it, the, the goal is too short-sighted. Yeah. Oh, we were creative. Wonderful. What did that do to increase the glory, to magnify the glory of yeah. Jesus Christ? Well, I'm not sure. Well, then, then maybe you should rethink it. Uh, but when you're thinking, okay, how can we 
focus on the content of what we're singing. How can we make people think more clearly about these words that we're singing, about the God we're singing to? Well, yeah, that's where creative, creativity can really serve. And I remember, I, I mean, when uh, CJ was senior pastor here and I was the worship leader, um, just how CJ would be very vocal about that, about wanting to do things differently, mix things up for the purpose of, not, uh, of people not just doing things by rote, not, not doing things without faith, for the purpose of drawing attention to um, what we were seeing. And one of those areas, I've been asked some questions about this, is the area of uh, special music, mm -hmm. which I you know, would have thought interrupted you know, what we were doing. We're supposed to be worshiping the Lord. We're supposed to be singing his praise. And CJ would encourage me to have someone sing a song and have us just listen. Mm -hmm. And it, it really took me a while before I got it that when we're listening, we're still responding. We're, we're still, our eyes are still being opened. And if it's done in the context of other songs that we're singing, it can actually increase our faith and our desire to sing the next song because we've just been affected by this song that someone sang for us. And now, now we want to sing some more, only we have greater faith to do it. And that is so far removed from, oh, we want to throw a special song in there because it's creative and cool and you know, people really be wowed by it. It's got a purpose, and the purpose is to serve the congregation. Yeah. So and I've just been so helped by those, mm. those thoughts. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we don't want to build a church that's known for its creativity, whether it's in worship or preaching. That, that, that is not what I want people walking out of this facility and to their cars talking about. I, I want them freshly affected by the content and the singing. And when you have the privilege to preach, we would want them freshly affected by the text right, right. and not my cleverness or creativity. Yeah. And yes, illustrations, right, have a place. But they must be subordinate to the text. Um, so that, I think, is, is what we are trying to build. And I think then that would form, hopefully, theologically informed creativity. And, and what you're doing, Bob, which is wonderful, is you're challenging that assumption, we have to be creative. Who, who said? Where did that come from? Uh, that sounds, that sounds culture-driven to me. Uh, now, again, I'm not arguing for acapella and uh, absence of instruments, but creativity must be handled with care. <laughs>